do it. Uh, Sussex up and downs, black patch in Sussex. And uh, why would that be a programme you think it would be worthwhile watching and what are your memories of it? It would be worthwhile watching because it allowed us to tell the story of a man who'd done some digging in the in the in the old days <laughs> um, but he wasn't one of the classic academic scholastic archaeologists of the time he was, he was a, I think he was a man who worked in a post office he was called John Paul and he went out and explored and he did some digging and, and he wrote up what he dug and he drew plans of these barrows that he thought he'd found prehistoric pit dwellings and, and he'd found some flint mines and flint objects and and, and it was you know it's a, it, 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 he was a man of his day doing what we would call amateur archaeology um, but in the in the days when he did it in the in the 30s he the academics poo-pooed what he was doing uh, and he was you know he was largely decried for what he did but he was a man of his time and that programme allowed us to not only tell the story about Neolithic flint mining, which you know, he'd got there, actually, he'd found that, but he'd also found these things he called pit dwellings. Well, even academic archaeologists, big names at the time, was, were calling things pit dwellings, which weren't pit dwellings. You know, he wasn't the only one. There's a lot of them put their names in in, in fancy volumes and journals and, and got it wrong as well. But it was because he was from almost from the wrong side of the tracks. He wasn't one of them. And it allowed us to to show how recording was done then. And some we tried to find some of the things he found. And he'd also recorded something in a in a in a narrative. He described where it found a second site which had been lost, actually. We didn't know where that was. And by going through the article and going through the maps, and um, I found I was able to kind of recreate his narrative and take us to a completely different field where this second site was. And we found these things there that he'd been recording as, as pit dwellings, where we found that there was some quite interesting stuff going on there and it allowed the, all that to be recovered. So it allowed us to to mesh together a story about how archaeology was in the 30s when people were exploring it and starting to understand it and allowed us to sort of go back over that story and tell not just the story of that site but also a bit about how archaeology has, has evolved a little bit. Well, of course now encouraging amateurs um, to get involved in archaeology is what we spend a lot of time in our professional lives trying to do and to encourage people to explore their ideas and, and to work with professionals, not to exclude them. So I, I think that story is worth watching you know, for that reason alone. Wonderful. Thank you for that, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs>